Hello everyone, and today I'm looking at a brand new lens from Samyang, the latest in their XP lineup of professional grade manual focus optics, the XP 50mm f1.2. It's currently available for Canon digital SLR cameras, full frame or APS-C, and of course you can adapt it to work on mirrorless cameras too. Its suggested retail price is £800, or about $950 US dollars. I'd like to thank Samyang for loaning me a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. 50mm lenses are the most popular prime lenses on the market, and very few have an aperture as wide as f1.2, which means that this lens can let in about 30% more light than an f1.4 lens, and also give you slightly more out of focus backgrounds. A lens like this is incredibly useful, and can give you some dramatic pictures, as well as enough light for shooting in darker situations, or indoors. The main issue with many 50mm lenses is that they don't always offer the best image quality at those widest apertures, and stills photographers and video makers are demanding more and more resolution from their optics these days. So a stated aim of this new, premium grade Samyang lens is that it should be sharp enough for 50 megapixel shooting and 8K video work, and to compete against other more expensive, professional grade 50mm lenses. Well, we'll see about its image quality in a minute. Firstly, build quality. What strikes you immediately is that there's no getting away from the size of this lens, it's simply huge. This is easily the biggest and heaviest 50mm lens I've ever handled, by a wide margin. It weighs around 1.2kg, or about 2.5 pounds. Its filter thread is a very large 86mm wide. It's clearly a lens with steady working professionals in mind, rather than snap happy shooters. Remember, it's also a manual focus lens. If you can get over the lens's size though, you'll find its build quality is exceptional. Its design is nice, it's made of metal with a lovely brushed black paint finish, feeling absolutely solid. The focus ring is nicely rubberized, and turns extremely smoothly and precisely. The lens mount doesn't have a weather sealing gasket, a disappointment at this price range, but you can see electronic contacts there. Although it is a manual focus lens, you adjust its aperture electronically through the camera. You get focus confirmation through the viewfinder, and it passes EXIF information to the camera, too. It comes with a somewhat shallow lens hood, and a grey coloured pouch. All in all, its build quality is rather dreamy, but the sheer size of the thing has to be seen to be believed. Anyway, image quality. Firstly, some full frame camera tests. We'll start with my 20 megapixel Canon 6D. With in camera image corrections turned on, I'll explain that in a minute. At f1.2 in the middle of the image, contrast is high and resolution is just about perfect. Over in the corners, contrast remains very high and sharpness remains virtually perfect. Color fringing is almost invisible. Stop down to f2 or f2.8 for very slight increases in resolution here, but overall, on a 20 megapixel Canon 6D, we can pretty much give it 10 out of 10. Let's raise the pressure and move up to a 42 megapixel full frame camera. I've adapted it here onto my Sony A7R2. At f1.2, in the middle of the image, sharpness and contrast remain excellent, although a touch of purple fringing is visible here, on the contrasting edges. And to the corners? There's a slight resolution hit here now, but they are still very good. A little colour fringing is now visible too. Stop the aperture down to f2, for a great increase in contrast and resolution there, although we still see a little colour fringing. Back in the middle of the image, we see crazy sharpness, and no more purple fringing. f2.8 is just as good in the middle, and the corners see a slight reduction in that colour fringing I noticed earlier. At f4, it's just about gone. The lens remains fantastically sharp, even down to f11 or f16. So, the 42 megapixel camera shows a slightly less impressive performance in the lens's image corners, but the image quality overall is still, frankly, fantastic. Tons of contrast and resolution throughout the entire image frame. 
And finally, a test with a smaller sensored APS-C camera. I've adapted it onto my 24 megapixel Canon EOS M3. At f1.2, the lens remains crazy sharp in the middle with excellent contrast. The corners of the image are almost as good. Stop down to f2 for perfection in the image corners too. It stays this sharp all the way down to f8 and at f11 diffraction is beginning to kick in, bringing just a little softness. So a brief assessment there for a fantastic performance. Let's see now about distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. Without any corrections, we see moderate barrel distortion and heavy vignetting at f1.2. At f2 though, the vignetting is almost gone and it really is gone at f2.8. If you're using a Canon camera, then the lens has a little trick up its sleeve. It can trick your camera into thinking it's a Canon 50mm f1.2 L lens and offers you inner camera corrections accordingly. That's a nice, sneaky little feature. So with inner camera corrections, at f1.2 the vignetting is more or less corrected for you. The barrel distortion remains though. Let's see about close-up image quality now. The lens can focus as closely as 45 centimeters to your subject, which is average for this type of lens. Sharpness is just okay at f1.2, but at f2 it's back to being very sharp. Let's see how well the lens works against bright lights. The good news here is that there aren't many flaring artifacts to be seen, but contrast drops a lot when bright lights are in the picture, so it's just an average performance here. Finally, bokeh. Having an aperture as wide as f1.2 gives you slightly more out of focus backgrounds than an f1.4 lens, and the quality of those backgrounds is rendered nicely by the Samyang Optic. It's not quite the smoothest bokeh I've ever seen, and we see the typical cat's eye effect in points of light in the corners of the image, but the bokeh is smoother than average for a 50mm lens, I think. The lens has 9 iris blades for smoother bokeh when the aperture is topped down. Overall, the Samyang XP 50mm f1.2 is the incredible hulk of 50mm lenses. It's huge and a bit unwieldy, but it's incredibly capable. Its images are fantastically sharp, much better than Canon's equivalent f1.2 L lens, and this Samyang lens always gives you images with punchy contrast, pleasant colours and smooth bokeh. Its distortion, vignetting, close-up image quality and work against bright lights are nothing really to write home about, but neither are there any nasty surprises. Considering the lens's wide maximum aperture, exceptionally sharp optics and lovely build quality, its price will seem quite reasonable for professional photographers. If you can get over its gigantic size and weight, then this lens comes highly recommended.